Hello there. This is uh, my drift car. Looks like the front grill's come off already. Yep. Oh, so here, see that? That's coolant leaking. Hold on. Let me get the camera to focus. The leak. It's a pinhole leak. The pinhole leak is somewhere there. Anyway, so due to my leg, because of this thing, when I went to practice drifting a lot the last time. It decided to give up and just start leaking. And it got bigger. But I ignored it. But I had the hose for months. The replacement hose, I mean. So now, now we're gonna fix it before I can go practice again or, you know, have some fun. So let's get to it. This is the hose we're changing. I've had this for months, even I found out it was leaking already. There's the hose that we're going to change. It shouldn't be too hard. Hopefully. We don't run it. Hopefully we don't run into anything else. Okay, so there's no water in here. Look in there. It all drained out. So it's empty. So this shouldn't be messy taking it off. It's a nice view of the hose. First disconnect is done. Got the hose clamp off and got that off. So now I'll get this off so we can have space to work to get the rest of that stuff. First plastic bolt out. I'll put it here. Somewhere safer. Shy's a monkey. Right, second bolt out. Now we can move this out of the way. Cool. Ignore that. Now we have space to uh, work on it. Easy access. From the looks of it, it's been this is pretty new. One hose clamp's loose. That's what my hand's doing right now. Moving out of the way. Let's get the last hose clamp. Of course, it's in a stupid place. Ow, my hand doesn't fit. It barely fits. Well, mainly it's because of the way it's positioned. I don't know if you can see it, but my hand has to do that because the hose clamp thing. Where is it? Hose clamp thing right there. This thing. It's in weird, weird ass position. I'll see if I can find a better position to, re to set this so I have better access to this thing. But this may be the only way. Oh well. That's what happens if you have big hands, it doesn't fit. One hole scamp out. It's better if you get new hose clamps, but. I didn't get any, so I'm gonna reuse these. Hey, Claire. Hey. I found the broken piece for the dipstick. Where is it? It was in the inlet coupler thing for the pump. Oh, it got stuck there? Yeah, I think that's why it took forever to pump the thing out. It was blocking the hole. Oh, well, at least you got it out. Right. Okay. 
That was my brother. Okay, so the coolant that's in the engine block is going out now. Disconnect that part of the hose and got another hose clamp. So the hose is seized, or it's kind of stuck on there. It's not seized, it's just stuck. Okay, well, before I go forward, let me take off my watch. Okay. Got the hose out. Reasons for changing this hose. See this here? This little puncture. Stop focusing on the car, you stupid camera. Yeah, this puncture will cause a little leak when you heat it up or when it's after drifting a few laps on the track fluid would come out there and that's never a good thing so finally get to change it oh that's what fell the other hose clamp for this thing or was it this thing either way it fell I have to go find it now yeah something fell when I pulled this out Stick. Where'd you find it? It was in the uh, blocking the hole for the pump. Oh. Hold oh, on, someone's calling me. Okay, got the old one out, leaking. So I had to stop drifting because of the stupid leak. I got the new one in. I didn't get it in yet, it's right here. I have the new one. So let's put it in. I like to put some grease onto the uh, points here so it slides in easily and hopefully it doesn't seize up, but it helps it slide better. Okay, got these all lubed up and ready to go. So I'll start putting it in. So to help me out with putting this back so I don't have to use a screwdriver where my hand is all damaged and everything, six millimeter uh, socket, which fits perfectly on this hose clamp. So cool. Just figure out which way to put this thing so it's easy to access. Am I doing this right? Does that go there? Uh, don't do that. And we're in. Hose fits pretty good. Just a little weird. Now let's tighten the clamps. <laughs> How are you doing, Savior? Big screwdriver time. That looks good. Okay, so switching sockets so I can tighten the other hose clamp. Let's see if this works. Okay, so looks like using the ratchet to tighten the hose clamp is a better idea. Compared to using just a screwdriver which makes my hand doesn't fit. Looping up the opening. And looping up this thing. This out of the way. 
Make sure the hose clamp's right in there before you put this uh, reservoir back on. Put this back in, which I think is a coolant sensor. This overflow line, I think it's overflow, I don't know what the hell it is. Tighten up the hose and then tighten up the reservoir tank. Put the re plastic retaining nut on the screw thingy. Okay, I'm on the other side. I'm gonna put the other retaining nut on this side. Make sure it's in the hole. Ah! It fell, I'll have to go find it now. So I found another one in the trunk. Don't know where, don't worry about it. Let's try not to drop this one. All right, we're secured. Let me just tighten it. Okay, let's tighten the other side. Okay, it's solid. We're good, we can fill it up now. Let me put this back, diagnostic support. There we go. Now we just gotta fill it with coolant. So it should be self-bleeding, but it's an old car, so we'll see. Okay, it's filled, so it looks like it's bleeding itself. Theoretically, since this is higher than the engine, all the air should push itself out. But last time we did, um, we had to bleed it while it was on. Okay, so we're just gonna let it warm up and see if the temperature's stable. If it's not stable, we need to bleed it. All right, so I finally got to change the, uh, that stupid hose that's leaking. Just waiting for it to warm up and hopefully the needle stays in the center once it's warmed up. Heater's still warming up, but passenger side's not hot but then this is this happens okay so change the hose it's in coolant's in it's not overheating doesn't need to be bled apparently but should always bleed it when you are but this time it didn't need to be bled it doesn't overheat I drove it around a bit now let's take it to uh, let's go for a test drive let me get some gas first it's been sitting no gas and let's see how it drives Um, idea was to come up here to, for the view. Car drives fine. Not overheating, everything's good. Even though it's a little bit damp, it's a little squirrely around the corners, but it's fine. Idea was to come up here because of the view, but it's kind of raining. And it stopped raining for a few hours, so I decided to come up here. But, well, this is what we got. This is our lovely view. Just fall. So yeah, car drives good. So I'm just gonna get some drift spares for it, some burner tires. So hopefully next time, hopefully next week or soon, you can go to Grange and you can see this thing drift. 
barely. I'm driving, so I'm not that I'm not that good of a drifter. I'm still learning. So uh, yeah, look at that. It's all foggy. What view? It's a nice view. But while we're up here, let's take some pictures of the car. So anyway, car drives good. Car is good. Let's let's drive it back down and head home and call it a day. But yeah, change the hose. Hose is good. Didn't need to bleed the system, which is good. And well, uh, it's ready for the next track event.